day 33, Louisville, Kentucky, layover day one. Yeah, we we'll occupy Louisville. You know, it's so, it's so nice to come into an occupation again. You know, it's been such a long stretch, and um, I think there's a lot of time off between the, the two occupations between Nashville and Louisville where we really got to see and experience life, you know, and, and, and life without occupa occupation. Then to come back into it, it's it's very heartwarming, you know, and uh, it's nice, you know, spending the day off in Louisville and uh, experiencing what Louisville has to offer. And I actually asked around; I was wondering um, where I could go for lunch. I ended up going up to uh, the Franciscan homeless shelter because they don't have a kitchen on site in Louisville. So uh, I ended up going to the homeless shelter, and it was nice. I walked walked over there. And uh, as I was walking there, they, they opened at 10.30 to, no, to, to noon 30, about 10.30 to 12.30, right? As I was walking over there, I just saw people walking away around 12 o'clock with, with their stomachs full, you know? And they're kind of whistling as they were walking away from the homeless shelter, you know, or the food, food shelter. So um, I ended up walking in through the doors and uh, was served by the Franciscan um, elders, I guess that's what you call them. And... Uh, it was nice. It was really, it was different. You know, I've never, I've never been on that side before. You know, I've served food at a homeless shelter before, but I've never been served food. You know, and uh, sitting there, watching and listening and learning and, and, and engaged with those around me. You know, I saw a lot of people that were down and out. You know, and downtrodden and really hopeless. And you could tell that. When you don't practice something, it deteriorates, you know? So when you don't practice social skills, it deteriorates. And I saw that firsthand, you know? A lot of the social skills were, were gone or laxed, you know? And they're on their way out. And I, when I mean social skills, I just mean, you know, considerateness, you know? And, and, and understanding what, what people are going through and, and that insight of sorts. You know, and I think that comes from just interactions with people, you know, and it's, I've seen the same kind of uh, lack of social skills from people that are on the computer all day, you know, people that don't go out and meet people, you know, and it's the same thing, believe it or not, you know, the degradation of the social skills. And uh, so I was sitting there eating and, and I was just minding my business, you know, and I just saw, you know, children running around, you know, I saw, I saw older gentlemen, older older women walking around. I saw younger men, I saw younger women walking around. And I was America though, honestly. You know, America is not that well off sometimes, you know. In certain communities, America is very blight. And it's not the worst third world country, yet it's still blighted. And I just I just sat there and I was just wondering what I could do, you know. And it was it's hard not to fall into it and go, man, there's nothing we can do, it's hopeless and, and everything like that. Yet I don't believe that. You know, I really think that there's something tangible there. We can grab onto something and say this is what we can do. You know, it's is this a problem? Yes. Is there a solution? Absolutely. You know, I think the generousness is shown, you know, our human nature is shown when we when there's situations like this, you know. When there's situations where we need to be able to help, it gives us an opportunity to help. Does that make sense? And it's deep because I think it's striking a nerve with just basically the whole Occupy movement sometimes too. You know, it's like, you know, the Occupy mo movement wouldn't exist if it wasn't for these existing problems. Now the fact that these existing problems are there doesn't mean we push it under the rug, it doesn't mean we get violent and angry, no, if anything, we should, I mean, I'm not should, I don't like the word should, uh, you know, it's, it's an opportunity now, you know, because we've all, there's always perspective, you know, it's always perspective, now it gives us an opportunity to see how we can be the example, how we can set the stage for the rest of the world to follow in, the, in those footsteps, you know, if America is really what it's all supposed to be, that means we are setting, paving a path in which others can follow like a lighthouse you know it's like if, if we if we are that place where it doesn't matter where you come from or who you are we're working together in unity you know standing together I'm sure that that's gonna trickle down not even trickle down it's gonna it's gonna set such a precedence it's gonna set such a standard that everyone wants to follow through with that you know and it's just 
God, you know, that's like crazy. You know, it's like, instead of saying these people are bad, let's go, damn it, there's an opportunity now. Now there's a reason. Now there's enough people that have a reason to do something. You know, that's it. That's why, that's why we put ourselves into this mess. Because subconsciously we've been waiting for something to happen like this, you know. And now that it's happening, we can't point the finger at these people and say they're wrong. Or we can. It doesn't matter. Everyone's open to do whatever the hell they want to do. But I'm saying we have that choice and we also have another choice. You know, and that's to say, damn, thank you for this opportunity. Let's make it the best opportunity ever. You know, let's expound upon this to a point where no one's expecting us to react like that, you know? Do we want to react in a way where it's aggressive and say it's your fault, your fault, your fault down with the system? Or are we going to, are we going to accept there's an opportunity and go, wow, look what we can do with this. Look at, look at how much we can provide to people with this opportunity. Look how much we can strive for the people with this opportunity. Look at what we can do with this opportunity with the people, you know? And I think if unity was ever supposed to happen, now is the time for unity to happen. You know, it's 2012 and internet got us connected with everybody. You know, and it's, that's the case. When are we gonna start using it? Maybe this is the time, maybe this is the moment, maybe this is the, this is the movement. Just saying, you know? And uh, I, it just comes down to, you know, is it the great divide or is it the great opportunity? You know, is it the great economic divide or is it the great opportunity for America to set a standard in which everyone can look to follow? Look to, 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 it's like, it's like when I'm walking down a path, you know, and like, I can go straight through the shrubbery, I can go straight through the thorns. Or I can walk through the path that's already kind of laid out in front of me, you know? And it's like, there's people that have laid out this path in front of us through the 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even before that, the 1800s, the 1890s, 1920s. You know, there's people that have paved this path before us, and everyone that's come before us, you know, let's, let's do that. You know, don't get me wrong, there's still times where we have to pave a path as well on our own, but... We see it, if, you know, if, if someone's trampled down the, the shrubbery for us, you know, let's walk down this path and let's, let's show everyone what it's all about, man, because this is it, the great divide or the great opportunity, and I'm saying, let's make it the greatest fucking opportunity ever, you know, that's, that's something crazy, isn't it, I mean, is everyone getting this, you know, am I the only one that's seeing this, or is, why isn't this being talked about, you know? It's a great opportunity for us to do something to raise ourselves up out of it. I take responsibility. I'm accountable. And I can change it. I'm powerful, not powerless. And I think more people are looking to be empowered. Which is what we're after, yet we also have to be responsible and accountable for what's happening. You know? Empowerment without that is not even empowerment at all, it's ego, isn't it? Anyways, a little philosophical there. All, all I'm getting at is if you give me a choice between fear and love, I'm gonna go with love. You know, if you give me a choice between economic divide or the great opportunity of 2012, I'm gonna go for the great opportunity of 2012. Yeah. What a great day of rest! Occupy Louisville. Nice to just relax, mulch through what everything we've learned up to this point. And I'm telling you what, man, there's we're 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 hammering out the details of something amazing here, and I can feel it. I can't put my finger on what it is yet. What it is, I don't know yet, but I can feel it. And that's all that matters. Thanks. Day 33, Occupy Louisville. I love you guys, and uh, check back in with you. By now you should have somehow realized what you got to do I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about